I am designed by God that I release my authority through my words. I am made in the likeness and in the image of God. How did God release his authority? He released his authority through his word. He said, let there be light. Yes. He said, let the light and the darkness separate. He said, let the evening and the, the morning be called the day. He said, let the water separate from the land, and it was so, and he saw that it was good. He released his authority through his word. I am designed the same way that he is designed. I release my authority through my words. That's why it doesn't it don't benefit me to wrestle with the man, to wrestle with the people, to get upset with the people. Because if you're wrestling with the people, that means you're not using your authority. I mean, the authority don't wrestle. That's they right. speak. That's right. If I gotta wrestle with you, that's called power. I try to influence you by being stronger than you. Oh, that's not authority. Authority, all you do is speak. And when someone is under authority, they move. Amen. Your boss man don't have to wrestle with you to come to work. No, he does not. He tell you to be there at seven, what time you show up? Seven. At least seven. Now times out of ten, you'll be there before seven. Because why? Because he has authority. He says, be there at seven, I'm gonna be there at seven because I wanna work here. He has the authority. Police tell you to pull over, what you do? You pull over. Why? Because he has the authority. Amen. So authority is released through words. Matter of fact, let's go to um, the book of Let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke, the eleventh chapter. Amen. See, a lot of times we mess ourselves up because we say the wrong things out of our mouth. Amen. We spend too much time uh, saying the wrong thing out of our mouth. And the Bible says you're going to live and die by the words of your mouth. Mm. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says by your tongue, you're going to live or die. You are going to determine your tomorrow by what you're saying today. So when you use your tongue to talk garbage, then you are becoming a curse to yourself. My God. When you talk defeat, when you talk failure, when you talk about what you can't do and how bad it is. See, we are just thanking us that we like pity parties. Yeah. We like to feel sorry for ourselves. We like to feel bad. And so when life starts to wail with us, we, are, we start talking about how bad it is. And how rough it is and how hard. We forget all about the God that we serve. We forget all about the problem of all the times he's delivered us and brought us up. We forget about all the times we didn't know how he was going to make it and he made a way out of nowhere. And we just start complaining and murmuring. It's so hard. The gas prices. The, 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 the job market. And we are building our tomorrow with nasty words. My God. Contrary words. Talk about how bad it is, how rough, how I can't make it. Every time I try to take one step forward, I have to take two steps back. Every time I get a, 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 a nick, I got to spin a dime. Uh, 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 we sang songs. Uh, 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 one song, the character, character spiritual say, um, what did he say? Um, Some of the song he says about um, wait for me. Uh, uh, he says, "Don't, don't call the road till I get there." Then in the song he says, "I may be crippled. <laughs> I may be blind. Yeah, a lot. But don't call the road till I get there. I may be broke. Ugh. I may be crippled. I may be blind." But don't call the road till I get there. That's garbage. Mommy. That's foolishness. Mommy. It's contrary to the word. 
So why am I going to speak that over my life? Why am I going to sing that over my life when God says I'm healed? When God says I'm the head and not the tail? When God says I'm above only and not believe? When God says it's his desire that I prosper and, 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 and succeed? Why would I say that garbage when God is telling me something else? Amen. Why would I give in to that garbage when God says he has so much better for me? Thank you, Lord. My tongue becomes my own enemy. Hmm. If you get in an argument, you get in an argument, your tongue becomes your enemy. Because now you begin to speak from your flesh. Yes. And the problem with being angry is that when you're angry, ain't no telling what you're gonna say. That's right. Ain't no telling what you you, you don't know what you're gonna say. If you get mad enough, you might say anything. You will say anything. If you get mad enough and, and you 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 say anything, and now instead of making the situation better, what you're really doing is making the situation worse because you're operating in your flesh and not in the spirit. Amen. And so now your flesh is doing all this damage that now one day you have to come back and try to fix it up. Mm. Now you telling me you're sorry, but you was just talking about my mama. Mm. Now I'm supposed to forget about that Thank you. and act like ain't nothing happened. You have to be mindful. Don't allow the enemy to use your tongue to curse you. Let's go to, uh, uh, what did I say? Luke, Luke 11. The 11 chapter, um, verse number. No, let's go to Mark. I'm sorry. Let's go to the book of Mark. Mm -hmm. The 11th chapter. Okay. Let's go to um, verse number 12. Amen. The Bible says, verse number 12, Luke 11 and 12 says, and on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. He is Jesus. 13th verse. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of fig was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of the tree of thee hereafter, forever. And his disciples heard it. Now let's get down to the 20th verse. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answered, saying unto him, Have faith in God, for then I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, talk about confession, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. He shall have whatsoever he said. He's talking about the believer. And he's talking about your confession. He says, don't think it's strange that this tree dried up when I said nobody was going to eat from it again. He said, don't think it's strange. He says, have the faith of God or have the God kind of faith. Because whatever you say out of your mouth as a believer, your words have authority. As a believer, your tongue has been made mighty through God. God has anointed your tongue. When you speak his word, he has anointed your tongue to get results in your life. It don't make sense to the natural world, but God has made your 
this is why the enemy fights against our confession so hard. Because he understands that if I can send enough trouble your way, I'll make you say stuff you ain't got no business saying. And when you say stuff you ain't got no business saying, your tongue is mighty through God. And so what you say is going to come to pass. Amen. Because you released it out of your mouth. Your tongue, your tongue is mighty through God. God has anointed your tongue. I'm talking about the believer. He has anointed your tongue. See, even the world understands this to the degree where we have uh, uh, people who go around and do motivational speaking and they try to teach the people the power of confession. People say, spend all kind of money to sit through seminars where they're taught by big companies and corporations about the power of positive confession. Saying the right thing. That's not what I'm teaching you. What I'm teaching you is the word of God. I'm not teaching you to say what you want to say. I'm teaching you to say what God says. Yeah. Amen. I'm teaching you to say what God says. I'm not trying to teach you that you got some kind of power within and of yourself. See, those people teach them that they have a power of themselves, that if they say the right thing, that they can change their life. But that's not what I'm teaching you. You don't have any power or any ability in and of yourself. But if you are a believer, your tongue has been anointed by God because you are designed and made in his likeness and image that you can make changes in your life if you learn how to use your tongue for good and not evil. Thank you, Lord. Speak the word, not your feelings. Yes, yes. Speak the word, not what it looked like. Amen. Speak the word, not what the doctor say. Speak the word, not what your body is telling you. Speak the word, not what your bank account is saying to you. Speak the word and the word only and the situation will change. Thank you, Lord. Don't get caught up talking about what the bank uh, um, slip say. If the bank Slip say zero. Mm -hmm. You say, my God shall supply <laughs> all of my needs. Mm -hmm. That's that, that, that. The best way I can give that to you is when I was in the world, I never, I never did drugs, never drunk, never smoked. One thing I used to always do, I used to fight a lot. I was always getting in fights. <laughs> I used to love to fight. My goodness. <laughs> it was something about fighting that I enjoyed. Back then, I was in shape. And I thought, I used to tell, I, I told her this one time. I used to have a dream, a desire. I wanted to fight a lion. Oh. <laughs> I'm serious, I'm serious right now. Insanity now. Because I, that's how bad I thought I was. Oh, Lord Jesus. I used to think I could whoop a lion. I used, I used to think, I used to be nice with my calls. You were nice. Yeah, I was nice. Yeah. She don't see me a few times. <laughs> I used to be nice with the calls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I used, to be, I used to be nice with the calls. Yeah, you were. <laughs> and I used to think I could whoop anybody in a one, I'm not talking about guns, that type of stuff. I'm talking about one-on-one -on -one fight. I used to think I could whoop anybody. And one of the things that I learned that was valid then that I see that's valuable in the body of Christ is that the art of talking trash is very valuable in the body of Christ. See, in the world, when you finna fight, you talk a lot of trash. Because like I say, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna discourage him, 
and you want to build yourself. In the body of Christ, it's very, you have to learn how to talk trash to your enemy. You have to learn, you have to learn how to talk trash to, to, to a situation where you feel like it, it ain't going your way. You have to learn how to boast in the Lord. Amen. You got to learn, I'm not telling you how, how, how to, 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 uh, to talk trash or be arrogant about yourself as a believer. I'm trying to teach you how to learn how to boast in your God. In the midst of being outnumbered, in the midst of being overwhelmed, in the midst of being in a situation that's bigger than you, you got to learn how to make your boast in the Lord. Amen. Not in yourself, not in your own ability, but you got to learn how to talk trash in the fact that my God will supply all of my needs. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't see where it's going to come from, but I know he's going to make a way. Yeah. You got to learn how Hallelujah. That's his promise to me. So regardless 